Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for taking a moment out of your day to watch this demonstration of how to download more RAM. Otherwise known as a Warframe video! Woo! Ivara, Ivara, oh, Ivara. That one frame people love to hate. Whether it's the rage inducing feeling it gives trying to perfectly farm spy missions to get her components for months and getting nothing, and then you watch your friend get all three components in a single, um, in three single missions, or whether it's just the sheer insane damage potential she gets on the complete adverse side of it, people love to hate Ivara for some reason, and I guess today we're gonna find out why. Ivara has contentiously been a loved and hated frame for a very long time. I mean, it's not that she's bad, because in reality she is stupendously, a stupendously versatile frame, tailoring to multiple different playstyles, focusing on the thematics of stealth and subversion. Ivara, with her quite possibly most powerfulest of all the exalted weapons, because it's one of the only exalted weapons that has unbelievable range to it, because it's a bow called the Artemis Bow, which deals insane amounts of damage. And like all exalted weapons, you can mod it, and the way you mod it can often dictate the type of damage you do. To then add to that with the insane amount of versatility you have with all of her augments that can change up the playstyle, as well as putting potency to all of her abilities, it really helps emphasize several different playstyles you can go for with Ivara. Because unfortunately, people seem to really think that Ivara is only good for stealth, which she is, but she's good at other things as well. I mean, she can make a good sandwich as well. Never think about that? Yeah. The funny thing with Ivara is that she is obtained by completing spy missions perfectly. And by that, I mean making sure you complete all three challenges without failing at all. Which really, when we think about it, is a bit weird, because of all the mission types you could have obtained her from, you do spy missions. And a lot of the reason why people want Ivara is four spy missions. But by the time you have all of her pieces, chances are you're well versed enough with spy missions that you don't need her anymore. Unless you're stupid like Billy over there! Look at you, Billy! The drop chances vary depending on the type of spy you do. So I'll have a handy little chart up here somewhere demonstrating what your chances are. But keep in mind, the higher level spy missions, or the spy missions that are generally considered harder, tend to be better for farming all of her components. But you can do all types of spy missions to try and farm for her. It's just the harder ones you do, the more chances you have. It's a little bit convoluted and I could spend like five hours, but for the sake of making this video not five hours long, let's just show you this lovely little chart. Moving on to the abilities, starting with Ivara's passive. It's not one of the most flamboyant passives out there, but it really plays to the thematics of Ivara. Ivara's passive is called Sentry. This sort of plays to Ivara's theme of stealth and sneakiness. Like a female version of Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid, she can see enemies on her map without the need of all those mods like Enemy Radar or any of those other enemy detecting mods such like. So should you move within 20 yards of an enemy, they will then appear on your minimap to be revealed to all. Keeping in mind that you can still then stack your other mods to then get even further vision away, this is just a complimentary thing that can help you see things from further away and hopefully avoid being detected should you be aiming to be, st be stealthed. Ivara's one is called Quiver. Kind of like the action you do when you see just how damn sexy she is. <laughs> anyway, although... Ivara looks like a dainty, delicate frame. She is, in fact, secretly trying to do her best imitation of the green arrow, and has a quiver filled with all sorts of devious arrows that will do different things. Tapping your one will cycle between the different arrows down in your action bar, and then holding that number one will then fire said selection. The first arrow in this menagerie of arsenal weapons that Ivara has is called the Cloak Arrow. Cloak Arrow will be fired off and whatever it hits will then generate a 2.5 ra uh, meter radius ring and anything inside this ring will then be stealthed for 12 seconds. This can be shot at your allies and then be latched onto them like so, or like so to the enemy, and it will then create that ring around them as well. The bubble duration is affected by ability duration. The ability, this, uh, the ring, sorry, the range of the ring is affected by ability range. And the cloak arrow can only be attached to allies, enemies, and objects. 
The second arrow is called Dash Wire Arrow. Dash Wire Arrow is super cool and creates a running wire between your location and an object within 100 meters. This is a very versatile thing that allows you to have verticality and set up ambushes for your team, as it can be used by you and your allies. The distance of the wire is not affected by range and is just a flat 100 meter radius that it can go to. A maximum of four wires can be active at any given time, and casting a fifth wire will get rid of the first wire you cast. And it'll make you all look like uh, pigeons ready to take a dump on your enemies below you like so the next arrow and by name alone should give away what it does is called the noise arrow when this lands in an area it will cause a radial ring that will generate noise causing enemies to be distracted and head towards it like flies to a fly zapper the radius of the noise is affected by ability range and the amount of enemies it affects is almost unlimited. However, the enemies do need to be uh, uh, in a state of neutrality in order to actually be drawn to it. So this is quite nice if you're planning on doing stealth missions and just want to move them out of your way. However, this is very likely going to be the least used arrow you use. It is just kind of funny to watch enemies walk around like lemmings. And the fourth and final of the relevant arrows is called Sleep Arrow. Much like the Noise Arrow, the name sort of gives away what it does. The Sleep Arrow, once impacting an enemy, will then generate a radial ring that will put all enemies that are hit with this ring to sleep. The range of this is affected by ability range, and the duration of the sleep is affected by ability duration. Keep in mind, however, that recasting this on enemies will not refresh the sleep. They will just directly wake up regardless, and you'll have to recast it once they've woken up to then refresh the sleep. There is, however, some diminishing returns to this if you're not careful, so spamming it might not be the best thing to do. But the diminishing returns is not exactly that noticeable, and chances are by the time it matters, they'll all be dead anyway. This does then open them up to executions, and all that Gucci kind of stuff that stealth entails. So make use of this as and when you wish. The augment for this affects two of the different arrows, and it affects them in such a way that is quite dramatic. This is probably one of the most impactful augments you can get for an ability, and, is great, and it greatly improves the synergy and usefulness of your quiver. This will cause your dash wire to gain 100% crit chance to allies and yourself who are on said wire, which will allow, which will allow them to blow the ever-loving crap out of the enemies that they're near, as you can see. Now that's a lot of damage. Additionally, allies that are affected by the cloak of the cloak arrow, let me just swap over to a second. Allies that are affected by cloak arrow will then additionally gain 100% status reduction. And the potency of this is affected by ability strength. So building ability strength will increase the crit chance and the uh, status chance prevention. It is immensely powerful and the indicator of your damage uh, improvement is shown up in your buff segment in the top right of the screen and this can very easily scale to an insane point to the point where people even use Ivara for one-shotting limbs on Eidolons. So utilizing this with some other augments later can be very very powerful and I would definitely recommend giving this a try. It's really fun to see such big numbers being caused. The second ability, otherwise known as Navigator, not to be mistaken for that great 1990s uh, Flight of the Navigator movie, this is a fun little ability which once cast will allow you to take control of the next projectile you fire, directionally directing it in any way you want, like a little toy car, allowing to either scout around or correct what would have been a really badly aimed shot. Not that I ever missed to know such things, but... <clears throat> the weapons this correlates to is anything that is not hit scan so anything that fires a projectile essentially anything that is in the nature of a thrown weapon a bow a grenade launcher anything that has a physical object such as the penta these projectiles will then gain an additional 100 damage increase per second up to a maximum of 500 percent damage increase after 12 after five seconds sorry that's a lot of damage like stupidly a lot and it can even be pushed higher with power strength. And additionally, using that in synergy with the augment for your one, you can see why people start using this sort of thing for Eidolons, even if it is a bit gimmicky. Piercing Navigator is the augment for Navigator. Probably another one of the more hard-hitting augments you'll find in the game, but it's probably not one of the more used, unfortunately. This will increase the crit chance by 10% for each hit with the Navigator, up to 50%. Uh, and it also adds a fair amount of punch through as well, allowing your arrow to travel further and although it isn't affected by power strength it really does make this even more hard hitting but unfortunately again due to the tempo of how most people play you're likely not even makes use of this unless you're methodically going slow through a mission role playing your best interpretation of a rogue from skyrim 
I mean, let's face it, you are leaving your body exposed whilst using this ability, so it might not be the best thing to do. But I mean, if you utilize this with your stealth, having that extra damage can be quite funky. And again, it then combines nicely with your augment for your one as well. Prowl is Ivara's three, and this plays to her thematics of being a stealthy frame, because let's face it, a stealth frame without some kind of invisibility would be a bit weird. This is a channeled stealth that breaks if you decide to jump or do anything that makes Ivara do anything extrovertly active. Uh, and to be fair, this is probably the only thing people really look at Ivara for, but there is more. There is, in fact, more to Ivara than stealth. That's right, there is actually other stuff to this as well. Ivara gains a 40% damage bonus on headshots, so if you aim for the noggin like so, you deal 40% bonus damage. Unfortunately, you do have a movement speed reduction whilst in this mode, and that is slightly annoying, but at the very least, you're invisible and enemies will not target you. Ivara also becomes capable of pickpocketing enemies if standing beside an enemy whilst Prowl is active. Rays of light will then shine at the enemy within proximity of 4 meters for 2.5 seconds, before releasing a random item from that enemy's drop table. The stealth time is affected by ability duration, and the steel range in which you pickpocket an enemy is affected by your ability range. The bonus headshot is also then affected by power strength, so you can actually then utilize this with your normal build to deal even more damage and make it even more stupidly powerful. The augment for this is probably the one, one of the le less useful ones for Avara. This is called Infiltrate. This is one you'll use if you really want to get a crutch for stealth missions. This allows you to bypass lasers in laser barriers entirely and gains an additional 25% movement speed whilst having Prowl active, which is also then affected by ability strength, so you'll be moving quite speedily if you're going for a default build with Avara. Not exactly the most useful augment, but, but hey, if you really want to go for stealth missions, this will help for sure. And it really pushes the idea of what people have been using Ivara for for the longest time. Artemis Bow is Ivara's 4, and the coup de grace of her kit. It also goes against a lot of what she plays as, but let's face it, it's awesome to be an archer. Ivara picks up a bow like an epic champion and starts blowing away enemies with magic missile arrows that have natural multi-shot and obliterates everything it touches. Like seriously. The usefulness of an exalted weapon is insane. It's got a huge damage, it's uh, being an exalted weapon, it can be modded to this uh, nth degree for damage through the way you mod yourself. And on top of that, it has natural punch through and will scale it very well depending on the way you decide to play with it. Adding things like hunter's munitions will then push the boundaries of the damage this can generate even further. Utilizing it then with your other abilities such as your quiver. For example, if you then hold down your middle mouse button, it will then instantly fire whichever arrow you have equipped at that time. Adding a bit of synergy to whatever you're doing at the time. There is a natural drain on your energy whilst this is active, and in order for this to be cast, you will lose energy for every shot you fire. The damage distribution is 14% impact damage and 80% puncture damage and 6% slash damage. Each shot has a 2 times critical multiplier with a 25% crit chance and 20% status chance. As mentioned, then using the middle mouse button will then allow you to synergize that even further, and you do gain the benefits from your other augments as well, so synergizing this with good crit builds and status builds will work either way. Note that the number of hours is not affected by ability strength. The damage multiplier, the damage multiplier, however, is affected by ability strength. So you want a lot of power strength to make this work properly. Utilizing this with stealth because it's a silenced weapon will not take you out of stealth mode either, which is really damn cool. Something to note as well is if you tap the ability, it will create a vertical line of arrows. If you charge the ability, it will take that to a horizontal, allowing you to cleave more efficiently. So if you want to make the most of this, you definitely want to allow it to charge to full, so taking advantage of things like Vile Acceleration and Charge Speed mods will help you get these arrows out faster and equate to more damage overall. The augment for this is called Concentrated Arrow. It's not often that you get augments that are so divisive in people's opinions about it, but this is subjectively an augment that makes your Artemis Bow worse in some elements. But play around with it and let me know what you think, whether you think it's worse or not. Concentrated Arrow removes all multi-shot uh, from your Artemis bow and instead fires a single arrow that upon hitting a headshot will cause an explosion within 7 meters, adding an additional 50% crit chance to the overall damage as well. The range and damage is unfortunately not affected by power strength, so it is just a flat amount of damage improvement, but having that explosive damage for more condensed enemies is quite useful, and against things like Infested, this could prove to be very, very powerful. And that added uh, crit chance, once scaled nicely with your modding, can prove to be very, very powerful. 
I would say this is something that will be more useful at the lower levels, but it does then require you to actually score headshots to allow it to work properly. So if you can maintain consistent headshots, in my eyes, this could be better. But for the sake of simplicity and consistency, it might be better off not using it. But hey, explosions! And now we're onto the builds, last but not least. As always with these builds, please use your imagination. Don't use these as a cookie cutter. Have some inspiration. Take advantage. Learn from them. Don't just use this as a be-all or end-all because the people who use cookie cutter builds and don't try to diversify, you're not really experiencing the game the way it's meant to be. Because let's face it, when you copy a build, where's the fun in that? But as always, this is down to you to expand upon and do some exploration. These builds are just what I have found work for me and I'm going to demonstrate them to you. As always, the Aura mod in any of these builds is entirely subjective. Use what you find works for you. Energy Siphon would be a good option, especially if you're lacking in some efficiency. But anything will work should you wish to use it. Now, this first build is much more based around the act of using your 1, your 2, and your 3. Ideally, you could, in theory, drop some more power strength here. But the idea with this is you want to be able to have your stealth. You want to be able to have your sleep arrow be as potent as possible whilst also allowing your navigator to work nicely as well with your uh, prowl as well. We have a little bit of power strength from Intensify, Transit Fortitude and Power Drift. That allows our multipliers to get higher. We then have efficiency from Streamline. You could in theory take away some power strength and put Fleeting Expertise in there as well, but the minus duration generally isn't worth, worth it for the sake of uh, making your 1, your 2 and your 3 worse. Uh, we then have some range in the form of Stretch just to make the aura of those uh, sleeps and stealths bigger. We then have some survivability with Vitality and then some duration from Continuity and Augur Message. This is a very simplified uh, build and it will even work very well for your Artemis bow as well. This is what I would say would be generally you would want to aim for once you've got, uh, started moving up from a default beginner's build and it allows you to bridge the gap quite nicely. Now this second build is entirely dedicated towards the Artemis bow and this is the one you're going to be using her concentrated arrow augment for if you decide to use it. Now this build is entirely based around getting as much power strength as possible. Now you're noticing probably that we are missing the blind rage. That is purely because I prefer having some more efficiency so I can keep firing my arrows without chunking my energy too much. If you were to put blind rage in there, you would probably remove vitality because you can then just rely on your stealth if need be. But keep in mind, you will lose your energy much, much quicker. So you need to be a little bit more efficient if you decide to use that. But what we're using here is we have intensify. Ignore the fact it's umbral. You can just use regular intensify here. Then you have continuity for some duration just to keep our prowl uh, activated longer. To, le less, to increase the gap between the energy drains. We then have as much power strength as possible from Augur Secrets, Transient Fortitude, Power Drift, and Intensify, as mentioned. Flow is always good because that extra allotment of energy will then at least allow you to have your bow active for longer, even if you do lack that efficiency if you put Blind Rage on there. And last but not least, as any of these guides will have, it's a beginner-friendly build. Look, chat, beginner-friendly. It's all mods that are obtainable within your first 48 hours worth of play, and they're all rather easy to obtain. It focuses more on generalized play, much like what we showed at the beginning with our first build. This is sort of a build-up to that. None of these mods are hard to get, or at least they're not hard to know where to get them, as they are all very easily obtainable before you've completed the War Within, for the most part. Uh, you've got Vitality Steel Fiber for that sake of survivability, even though Ivara doesn't necessarily need that much because she's usually always invisible. It's nice to have that fallback. Then you've got Power Strength from Intensify and Power Drift. You've got Flow for that extra energy, Augur Message and Continuity for the duration, and then Streamline for that efficiency. Now I hate showing builds for weapons more than I hate showing builds for frames because weapons are so subjective on how you play them. And really it's down to you what you do with these. But this is a build that I have personally found works really well. You always want some element of some kind. I've gone with Vile here with Infected Clip and also Primed Cryo Rounds. It could just be Cryo Rounds as well. So choose an element, whether that's Radiation or Corrosive or Viral. And then you want to get as much crit on there as possible through Point Strike and Vital Sense. And that's the guide. I do hope this has been enjoyable and hopefully you've learned something about Ivara because I know I sure did whilst trying to do the research for this. If you want to come and join us with these, these are of course recorded on our, on our Twitch side of things. If you want to join us, there's a link down below. We stream generally every day with Warframe and some other stuff as well. And we're all about that there community, that spice of life, if you know what I'm saying. But we would always happily get you involved with these as we like to get the viewers to dictate how these guides end up going. And hopefully you guys will enjoy all our future videos. There's some very interesting stuff coming down the line. And although I am slightly busy at the moment and the amount of videos we're recording has gone down slightly, we are still going to at least try and get one or two videos up a week minimum. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I will hopefully see all of you lovely top hatters in the next video. And I'll see you next time, guys. Ta-ra!